young people. They may sometimes drive us crazy, but they're full of life, energy, and crazy ideas. So how can we channel all of that into something really good to change the world into a better place with the gospel? Today's guest has a few thoughts on this. Dr. Ken Castor joins us from Eden Prairie, Minnesota, where he is the next-gen pastor of Wooddale Church. He is also the author of Grow Down, How to Build a Jesus-Centered Faith, and the editor of the Make a Difference Youth Bible. Ken, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Bridge City News. Thanks, Naveen. Glad to be with you today. Pastor Ken, I'm curious, tell us a little bit about the Make a Difference Youth Bible, because we talked about earlier like how when I was young and I was just getting started on my spiritual walk, I started reading, I was given a new King James version to start off with, but then I found that I learned a lot faster and quicker once I got more modern translations. So I picked up a New Living Translation, I picked up the Message Bible, and I learned things a lot more faster and I had a better understanding of things. So can you just tell us what in this particular version will impact young people that will help them understand the Bible better? Yeah, that's a great, great question. Uh, the Make a Difference Youth Bible is a New Living Translation, which is written at an English level that uh, people can, can read easily. So it's kind of a early high school sort of uh, English level. And um, this particular uh, Bible that we've put together here has a lot of commentary in it that encourages students to put the words of Scripture to action. So what sort of difference could they make by pursuing what God instructs them to do, by getting to know Jesus better? How are you spurred into action? So it's kind of a get off the couch and do something about your faith sort of a Bible. Sometimes, sometimes I refer to it as a loud time Bible. So some people use the Bible as a, a means of quiet time devotional experiences. And we, we kind of wanted to encourage young people to be changed by God as they encounter his word and then go and change the world because of what he's doing in their life. So, uh, yeah, it's important for teens to be able to understand what the word of God says. So the translation is important and then uh, commentary to help them understand what to do. And what kind of feedback have you received on this version, uh, like especially those who can, can compare this version to, say, a more traditional uh, version of the Bible? Yeah, the readability of it is wonderful. It's, it's easy to understand. Um, there are... Uh, the vernacular is put into a way that we can easily comprehend. So especially for a teenager who's who maybe might enter into the Bible in a, you know, this is a foreign book. It, it seems strange to me. I, I don't understand how it's put together or laid out, or I don't understand what the numbers are behind the words Corinthians. I don't even know what the word Corinthians is. I mean, so the Bible can be a foreign experience for a lot of people, and especially a lot of young people nowadays. So we've tried to make it user-friendly, step-by-step process on how they can understand a passage. If Jesus is giving a parable, we'll give a prompt for how to think about it or what to do about this parable that Jesus gives this teaching that he gives in the book of John, let's say. So we, we try to make it really user-friendly so a young person could just open it up and begin to explore. And so many young people are in the process of finding meaning and purpose in their life and finding their own identity. I, I know when I was young, I, I had this numb feeling because I was struggling with identity and I was asking myself, who am I? And some people may be asking, who is God? Yeah, uh, it's it's part of the process you're supposed to go through in the adolescent stages. So I've been doing youth ministry for over 30 years. And for over a decade of that time, I was a youth ministry professor at a Christian college in Minnesota called Crown College. And um, I over those years, I was able to teach a lot of people the fact that young people are supposed to go through this process of exploration. It's It's kind of how God wired us. When he made us so wonderfully, Psalm 139, we're, we're wonderfully knit together. And a lot of people, Naveen, have a hard time seeing teenagers as being wonderfully knit together <laughs> because, because they're going through such a time of upheaval and change. Mm-hmm. And But that's intentional. God really wants us as humans to 
trust him. And then as we grow through life, he wants us to dig really deep in that seeking process where we're seeking after him and how he's wired us and what he wants to do in our lives. And the goal is a deep alignment with God's will for our life. So that's what the word of God does. Um, It's so important for young people to be diving into God's word to discover their identity in Jesus that he's made us in his image, that we've been called to a purpose in this world, that we're supposed to pattern our lives after him. And that's where we begin to really find our identity and who we are. And so it's it's a pivotal time that in a young person's life during those preteen and teenage years that they would discover a daily rhythm in God's word. And how can parents, uncles, aunts, and even grandparents help children find their way? Oh, that's good. You know, the first thing I think is often overlooked, um, the first onus of responsibility to help young people find their way is that the older generation would model it for them. So we we might want a young person to be faithful to God, or we might want a young person to be reading their Bible or doing nice things for others. But if they don't see an older generation doing that, it'll be very difficult for them to start doing that themselves. So it's really important, first step, that parents, family members, uh, mentors in our in our communities begin modeling those things for young people. So if we want somebody to use better language, for instance, in the way that we speak to others, we as an older generation need to begin modeling that first and foremost ourselves. If we want people to be praying, we need to model that in such a way that the next generation sees us doing that and can mimic it. That's Deuteronomy chapter six. Uh, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength, and follow my commands. And then the next thing God says is this, and teach those commands to your kids, to the next generation, to the children. Impress these commands upon them is is what it says. And and you do that through every aspect of life, Uh, getting up, lying down, going along the road, going to soccer practice. Uh, going to bed at night, how you model your life at home, young people will pick that up and they will begin to follow that. You know, Pastor Ken, it's, it seems like children can be really easily influenced, uh, especially when it comes to social media. If you look on Snapchat and TikTok, they're doing all kinds of like silly or crazy or funny acts. And it's because they were like, they, they got an idea from an influencer. And so often, youth find their values from celebrity role models and social media, which typically doesn't serve them well. So do parents need to set some boundaries and how can they do that? Yeah, uh, boundaries are definitely needed. There's a lot of uh, research that's coming out now about how the last 15 years have rewired the brains of the next generation um, because of a media addiction and um, being being highly influenced by uh, what they're seeing on their devices. Um, so there, there do need to be some boundaries that are set. Some people are actually recommending not giving a phone to a young person until much later than we currently are, so maybe even until high school, uh, perhaps. And that, that will just seem uh, mind-bogglingly difficult to a lot of parents. So maybe, again, if... Uh, I would I would stress that maybe our older generation needs to begin modeling this themselves. If children are always seeing their parents on their devices, there's no way they're going to keep their own kids off of those devices. So parents need to be really intentional and set boundaries. They need to they need to structure activities outdoors. They need to structure different types of experiences for young people so that young people aren't just addicted to managing their own free time on their phones. So it's important that, that people have other experiences with, with community. Now, with some exceptions of book series, such as Twilight and Harry Potter, these days young people aren't known to enjoy reading a lot, especially when it comes to something mm-hmm. like the Bible. Any advice on how to motivate kids to read and also to actually meditate on God's Word? Yeah, it's a great question. It's This is one reason why we put together the Make a Difference Youth Bible. It's because we want young people to discover that this isn't just for 
thinking and reflection, the word of God actually changes you as you encounter God through the Bible. So um, it, this is a, a, a story, a message, a book, the, the Bible, that encourages you to take action, to take steps, to do things. This is an uh, active-oriented sort of a book. It's not just a book that you sit and read by yourself. This is a book that changes the world, and it has changed the world. And um, young people can discover that. So I, I think we can encourage people to read in our churches. Sometimes um, we're not even pulling our Bibles out in our churches any longer. We need to start doing that. Pastors need to model that and actually have uh, tangible uh, Bibles. And then we need to teach young people how to open this up and navigate it and what's going on in the Word of God and and what these things mean. I, I ran into a person a few years ago who had never heard of the cross and the resurrection. And I, I think this is a this is becoming more and more normative in our culture that the next generation really isn't aware of what is in God's word and who Jesus is and what he's done. And so we have an amazing opportunity to help an, a new generation rediscover the word of God, almost like uh, Nehemiah um, rediscovering the word of God when they went back to Jerusalem. And there's so many things in this amazing book that God has given us um, that that are active oriented. And I think young people are really drawn to that. They want to see authenticity. They need to know why it's important to dig into the word. And so again, the older generation needs to really spur that and model it and inspire it. Yeah, because I remember back in the 90s attending church, people would be carrying their Bibles, they'd be carrying their notebooks to church. And uh, and now people are are either like looking up scripture on their phones or tablets while they're in church. And I guess that, that uh, it, it's kind of more distracting to have your Bible app on, on a tablet or a phone because it's, there's, there's more distractions on there, whereas, the, whereas a, hard cover, or a hard copy of the Bible, uh, there wouldn't be that much distraction. And so how much of a difference does it make to regularly read the Bible? And how does it affect young people compared to kids who don't read Scripture? Yeah, the Bible encourages a daily meditation on the Word of God. So Psalm 1, um, those who delight in the ways of the Lord, in the in the law of the Lord, they meditate on it day and night. Um, Psalm uh, Romans 12 talks about the renewing of your mind as you are transformed by God. So there's this idea that, that our daily rhythms should be in conjunction with who God is and what he's doing in our life. So our, if we really think that God is important to our life, we would want to spend time with him, right? My wife says this to me all the time. We've been married over 30 years. I absolutely love her. And she reminds me sometimes, hey, if I'm the most important person in your life, you're going to want to spend time with me. And I have to agree. And so we go on walks and we eat dinner together and we try to schedule dates together. And I, you know, if, if we're going to say that God is the most important person, most important being in our life, that he's the one that we should pattern ourselves after, then we should just readily admit that we need to spend time with him. So the goal, the goal with this is that young people will take a pen and a marker and they will get in here and they'll highlight and they'll write notes on the side. And they'll be very active with it, that they won't just do it on their own. There are a lot of prompts that they would respond to a passage with others and go do something about it. So Isaiah 58 says that we should feed the homeless. So there's actually a prompt in there. The Make a Difference Youth Bible says, go make a difference. It says, feed the homeless, go get some people together and go to a food pantry or go to a food shelf or a food packing station and go do something about this. So as followers of God, we should be people that are changing the world. And I, I think then the emphasis isn't about reading the word of God as much as it is about getting to know God through his word and then doing something about that. So um, the idea of reading becomes secondary. The idea of spending time with God becomes primary. I remember my pastor would always encourage uh, daily Bible study and scripture reading. In fact, he would always say that you should be reading a chapter of Proverbs a day. There's 31 days in the month, 31 chapters of Proverbs. So read it, read it every day and 
in a month you've read Proverbs and you just keep reading it over and over and over again and you've read it, you've read that book 12 times in a year. Uh, we've, we're, almost, we're almost out of time though and so I've got one more question I want to squeeze in. What's your advice for parents in preparing their kids as they graduate, leave home for college or the workplace, etc.? How can they represent Christ well in this hostile world that we live in? Well, let your kids see you reading the Bible. Let your kids see you praying, spending time. Let your kids see you doing things in response to your relationship with God. Um, I, I know it's stressful out there. I know the winds of culture are blowing around and there's a lot of things to cause us fear. But over and over and over again, uh, Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Um, he says that in John 14. Uh, he's the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, Colossians 2 talks about how when we root ourselves into who Jesus is, then we can stand strong. Even in the midst of the winds that are blowing around, we can stand strong and we can overflow with uh, thankfulness for all that God's doing. And that's really that, that image of the rooted tree uh, is an image throughout Scripture that I think we can pray for our children, that we can desire for them. We can lift them up to the Lord with that image in mind that they would be rooted in God and standing strong in a stormy world and overflowing with God's um, great, abundant life. So that's the goal. And um, I think we need to, as an older generation, model that for the next generation so they know that there's a way forward. Dr. Ken Castor is the editor of the Make a Difference Youth Bible. Thanks so much for your time today, Ken. Thank you, Naveen.